Hello there, fellow Dazzlers and the new players alike. Russell Joe's are bringing you something that I could actually have take the full screen. Finally, you thought this day wouldn't come, but it's finally here. Okay, anyways, as you can see, this is Winds of Change, and no, <laughs> it's not another gameplay demo. This is actually an early access. I'll throw a link down below if you're interested in checking it out. Um, along with all my other nonsense I have down there in the description. Uh, Clay's recently... Uh, released this in early access and is kind of uh, updating the game with new segments as he uh, finishes them and gets some tested proofread and all that fun stuff. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar, Winds of Change is the, uh, let's just call it the spiritual successor to Major Minor. We're not sure if it's a sequel or not. I don't even think Clay knows it's the sequel or not. But it's a visual novel game because that's all for reason making nowadays Our visual novel games. This one even has the uh, dating aspects to boot, but dating is not the focus of the game. So if my uh, thing here wants to stop lagging, we can uh, get to going. Let's start over a new game. And uh, those of you who have seen my two other gameplay demos, yes, we get to watch the village burn down. But this time, it's first person with full voice acting. And some other things too, I've been watching uh, development of this. So let's, uh, let me just quiet down and let the things go. The rebellion is in shambles. With the recent loss of their leader, they are struggling. But this defeat was not without a victory of its own. For in his final moments, he secured an artifact of great importance. This blade was paramount to the Triumvirate's leadership of Alestia. And without it, their tyrannical grip on the people would surely falter. Having no choice, they give their Grand Inquisitor one simple order. Destroy the Rebellion and retrieve the Lost Blade of the Triumvirate. But Dormek, the new leader of the Rebels, has set other plans in motion. Hiding the Blade in Valinoth, he is confident that it will be protected. This sheltered hamlet is now custodian to the weapon that would liberate the world. And so, it would be met with a gruesome fate by the Triumvirate and their Grand Inquisitor. Alrighty, sorry about that. Uh, close the window here. <laughs> Let's get going. So, everything is burning. I can do little to stop it from spreading. An immense pain assaults my head and I throw my face into my hands. The same question repeatedly plays in my mind. What am I doing here? I have no knowledge of what happened up until this point. My brain is struggling to fill in the blanks, not gaining any headway. It was almost like until this exact moment I never existed. Here we go again. Then why is it now that Cognition has found me? Was there something I could do to put out these flames? Or perhaps was I the cause of this inferno to begin with? A foolish thought and one I throw away. If I was responsible, then I wouldn't feel this sense of dread. An emotion shared by those who stand beside me. Come on, pick up the pace. If we waste any more time, we won't make it out alive. There is no way the Elder would let me let that one down. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you... Voice actor's name I don't know. I feel like she's escorting me and I should follow her. Could it be that she's been tasked with my protection? I grasp at the straws that are the memories of my mind. I'm only able to latch on the one. It's the title that I go by. Are you even paying attention? Oh, he changed the dialogue. There was a, there was a different dialogue for uh, Cirrus where it was, uh, if you want me to pay attention, you can call me Cirrus or something like that. But I'm going to go with I Cirrus. I know who you are, Cir. Did you hit your head or something? I did if I'm purchasing this game. <laughs> she scoffs as she turns the other way. But I know she's right. I'm not taking this seriously. It feels like a dream and I doubt that it's all that's happening. A few moments later, a sudden sensation startles me. There's a firm grip on my shoulder. We aren't alone. Underneath the veil of light, I turn to greet this second stranger. 
And Valesa has our safety in mind, okay? Forgive her hot-headedness for me. Freedom isn't too much farther. I must say, it's nice I don't have to read everything <laughs> this time around. We need to stay calm and think this I miss doing my voices, though. Two guys like us, we should have no problem. We'll be safe and sound before you know it. I'm sorry about that. I forgot to turn the phone off. We weave through the houses and alleyways to remain unseen. Doing our best to be completely silent, we bring no attention to ourselves. The flames encourage our urgency, but we're careful not to be fast or reckless. Our silence makes everything else more prominent, however. Screams of those being slaughtered fill me with a feeling of disgust. We need to find cover, and Valesa points out a small alcove waiting nearby. Look, they're dying because they panicked. We need to stay calm and think through this together. If we freak out, we'll only end up like them, you know? She has a point. Our first instinct was to run, but so was theirs. We should let them face the brunt of this attack. So for those of you who have seen the earlier versions of this game, you've probably already noticed we got a new text box, and I'm super late with pointing this out. And I like how we have panning effects, and it looks like they're characters that are standing in front of a background rather than just being part of an image. It would have been so easy just to zoom in, but nope. Clayce is really trying to do himself. I'll do himself with this one, and perhaps I'll do other visual novels, but uh, we'll see. Oh, hey, this got darkened because I, I was trying this out earlier, and I clicked on that one, so I'm going to click that one again. What else are we supposed to do? We're not equipped to take them on alone. Which, uh, I don't know if this is in the previous demo, but yeah, the game will now remember what you've done in previous playthroughs, so it will darken them down, so you don't have to, like, keep a detailed log file of what you've done already. Which I like, that's pretty cool. But using them like pawns, Ulrich. The people of Valinorth deserve more than that. Well, the people of Valinorth probably didn't deserve a blade being brought here that was gonna get them killed, but I'm not saying anything. Do you have any better ideas? If we try to save them all, we'll die. I'm here to protect you two, not kill you. Well, that's nice to know, Slappy. My suspicions are correct. Ulrich is the one protecting us. But why exactly are we a higher priority than the civilians? I venture a guess that we're currently in this Valinorth. The pain in my head pulses again, and I stumble back. As I let out a groan, Ulrich rushes to my side. His, his exaggerated concern is now understandable. It must be the smoke. Make sure to sit down. The lower you are right now, the better. Are you having trouble breathing? I shake my head and let him know that it's not the smoke. This causes Valesa to chime in, voicing her concerns as well. Yeah, something else is going on here. He's been acting strange for a while now. Is there something you need to tell us? I can't seem to remember anything. Did some debris fall on your head back there? I'm starting to side with Valesa on this one. Come on, time to gear you up. More like gear up for adventure. It's a reference to an earlier video of this I did. Oh, I'm sorry. I got I got used to not reading things out loud. He steps away for a few moments and expects the ground around him. There's a brief period where I can't see him, but he returns with a blade. The fire causes it to glisten, almost like it's begging me to take it. I don't care what's going on in that head of yours, but it's not more important than your survival. We're all overwhelmed. It's not just you. He holds out the blade, expecting my compliance. At this rate, it seems like fighting may be inevitable. Take it. We won't be standing here forever. As soon as we leave this alcove, we'll be vulnerable. I can't take care of you all the time, you know. It's just kind of funny. I can't fight. I have no training. You must be mistaken. This wasn't an option. I can't keep an eye on both of you in the heat of battle. Valesa has her daggers, and you need something as well. I was going to say, I like how, you know, the entirety of what I'm saying is laid out before me. And it's not just a dialogue wheel that briefly, with one word, says what my attitude is. Like some AAA games that have the number four in them. Not saying any names, <coughs> but you know. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have been drinking up beer I was allergic to earlier. He grabs my hand and places a blade in my grasp. He's strong enough to know that, I w that resisting was worthless. It's probably better not to fight, so I take it a nod. Now then. It's time to move. Seems like some of the noise has finally died down. We should start by investigating the town square. 
He walks off, expecting us to follow along. But as I'm about to take a step, Vanessa grabs my arm. The look on her face tells me something is wrong. You are confused about all this, right? I bet you don't even know what being the seer means. Or how we've known each other for our entire lives. I look at the ground in both shame and confusion. She's completely right. My head is a mess. As I try to think of an excuse, her response surprises me. That's normal, but please listen. We only have a few moments before Oric notices we're not there. The seer is special. You wield spirits to induce prophetic visions. When you have these visions, you're unable to remember anything. When you wake up, you'll dismiss it as a dream and forget it ever happened. As your scribe, it's my job to help you take advantage of this. I see. We have to follow Oric now, but know one thing. The way you're acting, I'm certain this is a vision. That means you can use it for information. That's kind of weird that the character knows that you're in a dream. It's just kind of like really... Fourth wall breaking, it seems like. Like, the game isn't fourth wall breaking, but it's just kind of like weird. Like, I'm in the. A, like, this is Inception or something, and like the dream knows that there's something going on and is reacting to it or something. I don't know. And she takes a few steps closer to me and grabs my hands. Staring right in my eyes, I notice a glimmer of hope shining within her. I'm relieved. This means Valnorth is still fine. <laughs> when you wake up, use this vision to save everyone. It's your duty as Seer to ensure this doesn't become real. I'm pretty sure Doomed Hometown is in effect, homegirl. She lets go of my hands and follows after Ulrich. Though it's hard to believe what she said, I'm less confused. I finally had a reason why I felt so disconnected. But if this was a vision, then what would become of Ulrich and Valesa? Would all of this carnage be undone as soon as I woke up? That's what vision means, homeboy. What if they died? Or what if I died in this vision? I follow after Valesa, realizing I might never know, but a faint sense of determination rises up within me. If there was a chance I could stop this, I had to do it. In the present day, the Triumphant conspires with their Grand Inquisitor, for the events that led to Valnor's destruction had yet to be set in motion. Sophie knelt before his masters, more eager to serve than he had ever been before. Rise, Sophie, but please... Assure us of your certainty. We hate to act without knowing everything. Well, that's not creepy. A prisoner mentions Valinorth over and over. The rebels are hiding something of importance there. Along with recent events, we can only surmise one thing. The Blade of Exodus. Oh, so, like, see, here's why we don't know if it's a sequel to Major Minor, because the Blade of Exodus is an important thing to uh, Major Minor and was a major factor in the ending. Ha, ah, see what I did there? So, like, there's these little hints that things might be connected, but I don't know. I think Clace knows and he's just leading us on, but we'll see what happens. I am almost certain. But if that's where they've chosen to hide it, it means that our other target is also there. I was going to make a joke about targets, but... Your compliance pleases us, Sophie. Your plan was risky, but it worked out in the end. A final interrogation would influence our decision further. You'd have me interrogate the prisoner once more. If I may be so bold, to what end do you request this? I'm wondering if that's like one voice actor, if that's like three different ones. The mystery, ladies and gentlemen. Not you, Sophie. We want your apprentice to do this. It is time for him to prove his worth. And test his might. Their voices echoed loudly through their darkened chambers. It mattered not which Triumvir spoke, for they were all of one Triumvir. Triumvir? Triumvir spoke. With a clear irritation in his voice, Sophie did his best to stay calm. My apprentice, I've told you many times I want to work alone. It would be more efficient for me to do this myself. Well, too bad, Slappy. Insubordination. This is unbecoming of you, Sophie. We demand that you obey. The role of Grand Inquisitor can be very dangerous. If we were to lose you, 
a replacement would be necessary. You must train this replacement while you still breathe. Smart. As you command. Sylvie so turned his back to the Trangford and spotted his apprentice. He was standing by the door listening to their conversation. If he'd heard of Sylvie's distaste of him, he'd showed no concern. Interrogation? Hmm. And what would you have me extract? I thought the prisoner was at his wit's end. Anything to confirm our suspicions about Valinorth. If you fail, I will not hesitate to punish you. Remember what we're on the verge of. I understand, Master. I'll do my best to get you what you need. What are the... <laughs> limits when it comes to my approach? Keep him alive, Halen. I find that psychological pain is the most valid approach. He cares more for his rebel allies than he does for himself. The voice acting in this is top notch, by the way. I love it. Like, can't wait to hear more uh, characters' voices. Then I will threaten the rebellion's very core. I'm grateful to have this opportunity, Master. Things are starting to line up well for me. They tend to do that when you have the Triumvirate's blessing. We should take care of this immediately and catch them unprepared. Every moment we waste is a moment they gain, Halen. But what is the Triumvirate? They leave the room together, talking amongst themselves. The Triumvirate waits until they're gone before speaking. A faint smile on their faces as age-old plans come to fruition, but it can't see their so faces. it's finally going to happen, isn't it? What we've been waiting for. All these years, do you think we should tell Sylvie a true plan? More mystery and mayhem, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, let's speed it up a little bit here. Halen entered the prison cell without Sophie at his side. His master remained outside as a suited display of trust. But it was evident to Halen that no trust existed. The prisoner looked up, surprised to see a different face. Yet within him was a slowly dwindling hope. Cut off from the rebellion, these would be his final days. So, someone different has finally come. What are you, the executioner or something? I figured it was only a matter of time. That sounds like the wise-ass character. I, my money is on him being a wise-ass. Actually, Sovi said to keep you alive. You seem to underestimate your value, Shane. And now for an expected joke. I bet the rebellion's like, Shane! Come back, Shane! You guys need to watch uh, older movies sometime if you didn't get that joke. You think I'm important? That's not what I expected to hear. Don't take it the wrong way. You must not know what I meant. He knelt down in front of the prisoner. With a sinister smirk, he tried to intimidate Shane. You're important as a bargaining chip. And the fact I must keep you alive is a curse. When I'm through with you... <laughs> you'll beg for death. You see, I'm different from Sovi. He's past the bar. They no longer need to test him. But I'm in the position where results must happen. You shouldn't have said that. When we give you back, you'll be a broken man. And soon after, the foundation of the Rebellion will crumble. You think we don't know that Damik is your leader? Damical. What? Shane's eyes shot wide open in other shock. It seems that Halen's threats work to great effect. You'd be stupid not to think we have inside men. I could order Damik's execution in a matter of seconds. You don't value your life, but you value his. Good. Now, I expect you to answer my questions. The Blade of Exodus, is it in Valinorth Village? And the one who can wield it? Do they live there as well? 20, whoa, 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 whoa what did I do? I accidentally right-clicked and it brought up the save screen. Yeah, that's right. You can uh, save at any time you want. So, you don't have to wait for save points like in Major Minor. They also have a history, too, of uh, what you've seen so far. 
All right, we're back at the fire. By the time we catch up with the orc, it's already too late. His large blade is in dreadlock, deadlock with one of the enemy soldiers. Valesa draws her daggers, and I hold my sword ready. We order you to cease your resistance. Those who support the rebellion must perish. To break the deadlock, Oa kicks his opponent in the gut. They stumble back and ready their blade with a flourish. It isn't much longer until they charge toward him again. Valesa, your dagger! You right click to throw it. Ulrich jumps out of the way and rolls towards us. Landing on his knees, he pries one of the daggers from her grip. Without even looking, he throws it behind himself. He closes his eyes and looks down at the ground. When he hears the impact of the dagger, his ears fold back. For a moment, it looks like he's actually sad. Spirits, please forgive my misdeeds. I acted only to protect those under my watch. Lord cares about the spirits? For some reason, I didn't expect that. But before I can think about this further, something happens. Catching Vlesa and I off guard, we're in complete disbelief. Huh? He notices the shocked expression on both our faces. Rising to his feet, it's not long before he wears the same look. The enemy soldiers fell as expected, but there's nothing inside. Scattered pieces of armor litter the ground. As we process this revelation, confusion assaults us. This was no ordinary attack. What we just saw was impossible. What's going on? Ulrich, what are those things? I don't know. Come closer, you two. This doesn't feel right. Empty suits of armor with a hatred for the rebellion. Only those who've mastered the spirits could do this. I'm afraid this is much larger than we thought. But that can't be true. The spirits are pure. They aid us. Yeah, sure looks like they wanted to help. <sighs> That's not my only concern, though. Look at this. Well, I mean, you know, maybe the spirits can be... What do you say, uh, forced to act against their will by dark magic? I mean, that's always a possibility, you know? She scouts as she steps towards the helmet, and kneeling down, she pulls her dagger out of it. Do you recognize these colors, Ulrich? No, why would I? Gold and white. The triumvirate standard. I would have never made such a deduction, but only they could wield the spirits in this fashion. Ah, oh, hey, go away. What's the triumvirate? Yeah, Those I want to know. Protectors. Some, even the creators of Alestia. I have no idea why they'd want to do this to us. Wouldn't be the first time they attempted occupation. They hinted that the rebellion was involved here. Valesa, do you know anything about that? Oh, snap. I don't. So much has changed lately. With our last elder gone, Miles has been in charge. Maybe he has something to tell us. It's worth a shot. We should see if he's alive. Protecting you is my goal, but now I want answers. If anyone knows about this, it would be him. To the Elder's house, then. Yeah. Oh, so we can't go to... Because in the, uh... In the last gameplay demo, we had the choice of going either to, um where we think the people are going to, or to Mylis's house, telling us we're following after Alessa, Alessa and Lorg. We lock long circular roads surrounding the water tank. I make note of it later. It might help put out the flames. More suits of armor loaded the ground. There's so many of them. It makes me feel a bit hopeful, like we stood a chance. The village wasn't defenseless, and this was proof. Aren't you glad we waited now? If we rushed in head first, we'd be dead. Ah, dang it. Sorry about that. Then where are the villagers' bodies? I only see the suits of armor lying around. There we go, I'm just gonna use my keyboard. That's a good question, actually. No blood, no signs of a major struggle, only the fire and a glistening of white armor. That's a good sign. Then they won and fled to safety. Are there any havens in Valinorth? I'd say the Elder's house and the Grand Tree. The fire may not have reached either, yet. Wait. How many people can fit in the Grand Tree? Hundreds. Easily. Not as good of a sign as I thought. The enemy could be trying to round everyone up. Put them all in one place before killing them. <laughs> That's dirty. But it works. We still don't know what they're after. It can't be genocide. It must be something else. Does Valinorth have anything the Triumvirate would want? Did the change in leadership bring anything with it? Good questions. Like I said, we'd have to talk to Milas. But I doubt he'd be at the Grand Tree. They look at each other and then look at me. 
You could tell that Velosa was pushing us towards Mylas, but that's because she knew this was a vision. But what if there are people in the Grand Tree? Is Mylas more important than all of them? It would be cold to let everyone die. Ulrich, this is larger than Valinorth, especially if it involves the Rebellion. Information could save entire villages. I don't like what you're suggesting. Like it's any better than what you suggested? Using the people as pawns to buy us time? How is this any different? They fume at each other, but realize it's a stupid argument. In the midst of this battle, nothing was so black and white. Though I find it odd that Ulrich switched viewpoints so fast. This is a matter of Valinor's future. Such things are under the jurisdiction of the Seer. I stand by his side, and you stand by both of ours. That is, unless you want to abandon your job. But that wouldn't look good on your perfect record. Hmm. <laughs> I guess you can fight dirty too. I don't like this, but you have me by the throat. I can only hope that you make the right choice. He stares at me with a serious look on his face. Talk about putting me on the spot. But if this was my role, I had to fill the shoes. What are we going to do? Well, see, I went to Mylas the last time I played this, so we're going to the Grand Tree. If you want to see, uh, I don't think we're going to get to Mylas's place. So if you want to see what that, lo uh, actually, that changed. Yeah. So I might do a, I might do an extra thing that shows uh, Mylas's house. So let me go ahead and save, and I'll. See, that is nice. I can do that. Actually, what I could do is return. Let's do a quick save. And then I can load this up later. So let's go to the Grand Tree. Vision or not, I couldn't let all those people die. It was my duty to save as many people as possible. Good to know we're on the same page. Mylas can't be the only one with information. Are you sure about this? Remember what we talked about. I nodded and reiterated my stance on the matter. Nothing was more important than saving innocent lives. All the better, if some of them had important information. We change our course and head to the Grand Tree. It didn't feel good to abandon Mylas, but we had to. This was real. I'd use the future to cheat the present. Oh, there we go. I, I didn't know a clicking actor caused an instant transition, but there we go. In the present day, Damak found himself lost in thought. Using the tunnels in Armazio for solitude, he found peace. There was much to plan, but for once they had the upper hand. Hmm. Valinorth. The Blade of Exodus. There must be something the spirits aren't telling us. Something we could use to take down the Triumvirate. When I touched the blade, I saw our victory. But I'm not trained to interpret such things. I pray for the cooperation of Valinorth. And I also like to think out loud. One of his advisors approaches, careful not to startle him. When he realizes he's detected, he lets out a soft yawn. Another one of those sleepless nights, Damek? I can't blame you. It's been the same with me. Did I hear you say something about Valinorth? Yeah, I was uh, thinking out loud. In Valinorth, there's a person who can peer into the future. That's why I had Pro bring the blade there last week. Well, what do you know? I'm aware of their culture, but their seers use spirits, not a blade. Do you think it will be that easy? Worth a gamble, isn't it? It's not my place to wield knowledge of the future. But the Seers are experts, conditioned from birth. Pro has sent word that the current Seer is male. His investigation is progressing slower than I'd like. We need to pick up the pace, and fast. Now that they have the blade, they're a target. The Triumvirate is likely planning their attack as we speak. That's why I've decided to send an experienced fighter. I guess that's me. I've had the mayor of Mazio write up a decree. It will allow you entry and the ability to complete what Pro started. On paper, and to everyone else, it's a simple export. Only Mylas knows the importance of this blade. All you have to do is deliver it from Valinorth back to me. That is, with the seer at your side, Ulrich. You seem to think that will be easy. It's not likely they know the truth of Valinorth. I can bring the Seer, but they'll just decline. Present yourself as a mercenary, not a rebel. Tell them a meeting of importance is happy in Mazio. We want their ability to help with some... Hmm, important decisions. Dishonesty. Great way to start a partnership. I have to agree with the big guy. 
It worked for us, don't you remember? Look at how invaluable you've become. Ulrich laughed and turned to look at the dark depths of the tunnels. At the moment, everything ahead seemed bleak and uncertain. Having an ally cast light on that future would be a tremendous boon. So this is it, isn't it? With the seer at our side, they can direct us. We can secure the victory that you witnessed. I almost don't believe it, but it's true. Now I have to be honest with you, Ulrich. There's a reason why I'm sending you instead of asking Pro. And what's that? He may not be strong enough to face what's coming. It's not just a hunch that Valinorth will be attacked. In our victory, I saw its death and destruction. You will see. Yeah. So I ask that you protect the Seer and his allies at all costs. And when you come across Pro, have him join you as well. I'll make sure to prepare an exquisite welcoming party. I like welcoming parties. I'll leave first thing in the morning. What did you see exactly? Nothing you can't fight your way out of, but trust me, it will show them the truth. And when you get back, they'll be ready to fight. But promise me one thing, and one thing only. That along the way, the seer touches the blade. If he can wield it, then we have our greatest weapon. I just still kind of feel it's weird bouncing back and forth between the vision and the present day, but I guess it's better than just like throwing it all at us at once after the vision is over or all the all all in the beginning or something like that as a prologue or whatever. So, eh. Wind of the Grand Tree. Thankful that it's not a blaze, but something else immediately stands out. It's empty. The survivors that we hoped to see were nowhere to be found. Empty, huh? Just what the hell is going on here? I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. Where are all the villagers? There must be something here. Something like what? Ulrich, the Triumvirate is burning down Valinorth. They seem to think we're caught up with the rebels. Thinking there's no evidence? That's stupid. She starts pacing around the Grand Tree, mumbling. I can tell she's searching for something, but I don't know what. I look at Ulrich, and he shrugs, just as certain, uncertain as me. But, but, but you're with the rebels, you son of a gun. Look, maybe Mylas knew we'd come here. He must have left something behind for us, right? There's no survivors here, so... Back to evidence now. Ulrich sighs and starts looking around as well. Whatever it is that Velessa wants to find, hopefully it's here. None of this is helping, Velessa. It's a tree. Nothing more, nothing less. No, there has to be something here. Come on, Seer. Give us a hand. Exploration mode. Oh yeah, there's exploration modes now. We can interact with the backgrounds. We can move the cursor freely around the screen. It will change to a bubble when hovering over an interactive object. Clicking on the icon to change will interact with the selected object. You can initiate a conversation with present comrades by clicking your icon. Note that not every map has a comrade, while others have multiple. Some maps will display how many books are hidden and how many you found. When present, this icon will uh, leave to the current world map. Clicking this icon will open the save game menu. It's optional, but I highly recommend it that you talk to your comrades. Let's go ahead and save... And I'm thinking we're going to keep things rolling for a while longer. Alright, let's see. Well, let's... Why, why is it so laggy? Oof. Oof. Maybe it's my recording mode. Hmm. No, there's not much here. But I guess if we spread out, we stand a better chance. Not that there's too much ground to cover. If I knew, we'd have found it already. <laughs> Valessa seems to think Mylas left something behind. But he isn't dumb. He wouldn't leave stuff out in the open. How do you know that? If it were up to me, we'd all be long gone. I can't fight your choice, though. It's your village. Let's do our best to hurry and get out of here. Where did you come from? You mean today, or in general? Oh, I'm a mercenary from Azea. I was actually hired to come bring you back there. A summit is happening and they want your input. The 
Because of its central location, it's the perfect meeting spot. The generals from Alarinthia and Baltia sail over annually. And Valinorth is nonpartisan, so you usually sit this one out. But obviously we're not because the world is on fire. Maybe it's a chance to get Valinorth more invested in Alestian politics. But they want your input and I've been sent to pick you up. I guess it's a good thing I got here when I did, right? Yeah. Is that an accusation of some kind? Oh, no, not I at come all. From, you don't accuse the guy with the bigger sword. I'll pretend I didn't hear that and carry on with this search. It's basically the hub of Alestia. Ports from there go to the rest of the known world. A huge city of commerce, it's full of strange people. But you'd get stabbed in the back before you find help. That's what puts people like me in business. Protectors of the weak. Well, not that I'm calling you weak, but you get the idea. You need my input or my power. I don't ask for specifics. I do this to get paid and make a living. If you want, feel free to ask them when we get there. And that is, if you two even agree to follow me. But right now, I can't let you die on my watch. We will discuss the rest once we're out of harm's way. Whatever you say, Captain. Theories? Well, yeah, if the Triumvirate is truly responsible. Alestia is divided into four nations, right? The Valinorth, Maseo, Alarinthia, and Baltius. Don't you mean the, uh, Water Nomad? Wait, no. That was the, uh... Oh, I forgot. I remember the Earth Kingdom, the Fire Nation, the Air Nomads, and the Water the water Tribe. Ah! Each references. nation has a general that serves the Triumvirate. They rule in their stead and make sure everything runs smoothly. Except, you guessed it, the Elder or General of Valinorth. No one really knows why you remained untouched for so long. But the theory is that they don't want to anger the spirits. You know, because of all that spiritual energy residing here. So I'm thinking this is a power play. Take the fourth nation and control the whole world. They did the same thing to Maseo about 20 years ago. What happened the same in Maseo? thing that's happening here, but with less fire. They occupied the free town and placed a general in charge. They used terrible force, but the town improved because of it. Mm -hmm. I'll never agree with their methods, but Maseo was peaceful. If they're burning villages down now, though, unforgivable. Perhaps the rebellion isn't in the wrong after all. It's not like anything I've seen before. So in tune with the spirit, you let them govern you. The rest of Alestia has history in their own hands. Not that it's a bad thing, of course. It's just different from the rest of the world. From what I've seen, the spirits have a good grasp on things. Is that mirror is his voice getting louder and softer depending on what choice I pick? Well, you're in the middle of a forest out here. You know what they say about nature and spiritual energy. The rest of the world has been deforested and settled differently. It's not that they don't care for spirits. Actually, it's more like they don't know anything else. They've lived their entire lives in areas devoid of spiritual energy. But Valinorth is so peaceful while the rest of the world isn't. It might very well be the influence of the spirit realm. You have a good thing going here. I can't stand what's happening. All right, what about you? Hmm? I wish. This whole place is a mess. Honestly, I don't even know what to look for. Milas isn't stupid, though. He'd leave something. Honestly, only a few months. He was thrust into the position against his will. Something happened to his father, the previous elder. Mm -hmm. But he's done such a good job, it's crazy. The leadership of Valinor did not skip a beat. He must have been training under his father. What happened to Dad? Nobody knows, actually. He went on a trip to Mazio and never came back. Search parties came up with nothing. It's like he vanished. Or was absorbed. Normally we'd hold an election, but things were crazy. That and Valinorth is really big on family and tradition. Everyone just seemed to expect that Milas would take over. He's performed admirably for the position he's in. I doubt even a full election would find a better candidate. I was scared for a while, but 
He really filled the role. He didn't want to do it, but he kind of had to. It all happened so fast. I'm not sure of the specifics. But it was seamless. He almost couldn't notice. I guess, but we can't all get what we want. It's not like I grew up wanting to be a scribe. He'll grow into the role, I'm sure of it. But we can worry about that after this is over. There's lots to do, and we can't even find him. I really hope that nothing bad has happened. I want to get to the bottom of it then. There's more going on than we can take at face value. He'd have his reasons, and I'd want to hear all of them. That's the thing though, it's not actually happening. If he can explain himself, and we can prevent this, well, then we can deal with it in a reasonable way. We can't condemn him on a vision like this. That's like hating someone for what they do in a dream. Besides, we have no way of confirming this is his fault. Yeah, but what if it's happening in the dream as a result of what he's doing in the present day, then that's faulty logic. I guess. I don't know. Let's, let's go back. I'm making a pretty educated guess. I'm trained to detect this kind of stuff. But it's so weird because this feels like reality. What's going to happen to me? I mean, technically, I'm not real, right? That's hard to take in. This feels real to me. But the way you're acting, yeah, it makes me certain. It's very rare that I become lucid in a vision. But with the evidence at hand, I'm very sure. <laughs> Better not talk about it too loud, though. I don't want Ulrich to realize something is up. The will state that only you and I can know. What would be the harm? Trust me, it's better for him not to know. He'd act recklessly, and he'd be really confused. Well, more reckless than normal, I mean. Well, that makes These sense. These are gifts. Blessings, directly from the realm of spirits. We're not in any position to harm what they give us. Because, you know, if somebody finds out they're in a dream, they're going to act stupid when you can act like... Not stupid and potentially glean more information. Okay, yeah, that makes sense then. So, a scribe is trained not only to recognize when their seer is in a vision, but also how to go about acting in said vision to prevent anything undesirable from happening. As long as any other dream, I guess. Or maybe when the spirits decide you've seen enough. That's one of the things we don't really know. I guess something traumatic, like your death, would end it. Our minds aren't fit to comprehend what would happen next. We should make the most of the time we do have in here. Why do they give us visions? Nobody knows, but we assume it's to protect us. If we know it's coming, we can change what happens. Seers have done it time and time again for thousands of years. A lot of people think they'll want something in exchange. That they're planting seeds to reap later down the line. <sighs> Stupid superstition, if you ask me. They just want to help. I think we should be grateful. Yeah, I agree. There's nothing more pure than the spirits. Without the visions, we'd have died out ages ago. Plot twist, they're actually trying to take over everything. This particular vision, no. But the concept of visions in general, yes. Without them, we'd have gone extinct long ago. They guide the world to a better future. And what's better, they ask for nothing in return. Only that we continue to harness this amazing power. Hold on a second here, I gotta take care of something real quick. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's just like I said, for better or worse. I was trained to be your scribe from a young age. We've been inseparable ever since. Oh. It's not exactly what I grew up wanting, but I'm not in a position to shun Balinor's tradition. Besides, I can think of people much worse to serve. True. Oh, so much to click through. Actually, you're seeing them firsthand. <laughs> Imagine how confused you'd be without me. We're supposed to guide you through these visions, but when you wake up, you also need to report to me. Or, I guess you can report to Milas in these dire circumstances. Either way, I help you in here, and you report out there. If it weren't for me, you wouldn't remember this. 
You'd wake up, shrug it off, and go about your day. <sighs> Imagine what would happen to Valimar then. Of course not. We're two sides of the same coin. <laughs> ah, dang it. Sorry about that. My finger keeps wanting to right click. I guess it's all the Call of Duty I keep playing. Yes and no. Actually, it's pretty technical. I'm your only scribe, but there's also a scribe in training. His name is Fortin, and he's prepared to take over if needed. I it's see. a recent addition to the ranks, but it helps out a lot. Without a scribe, your abilities would be pretty useless. Having someone fully trained means no one misses a beat. Imagine if you had this vision while I was gone. Just from that, I think you can gauge Fortim's importance. He's a nice guy too, but I'm sure he's long since fled. I'm sure you'll meet him when you get out of here. He tends to knock on your door first thing in the morning. So, let's focus on the matter at hand, alright? Since oh, I was a little I, kid, actually. Right, I was trained that, to be your scribe, so gonna... some of the other children were jealous. Their parents too, which seemed really immature to me. Apparently, there's some competition for the role. Fun times. But the Elder chose me, and like it or not, here I am. I guess I'm just blessed that I actually do like this arrangement. In the end, the spirits really were looking down on me. Even if being here right now is terrifying, I'm still happy. Doing my duty to save Valinorth? It's a dream come true. We don't know if the other kids would have fit this role. Well, I guess the answer is both yes and no. Before my parents passed on, they took care of the paperwork. Until I came of age, I had no choice but to obey. When I did come of age, however, I got to choose. Leave Valinorth and pursue my own dreams, or be your scribe. <laughs> I guess it's pretty obvious which one I chose, huh? So, while I was forced into the role, I chose to stick with it. Although, if this is any indication, we might have to leave Valinorth. In that case, I get to be your scribe and travel the world. I guess dreams do come true. Yeah, and same to you. Look at this vision. We're going to do great things. Well, let's get to the bottom of this and save our village together. I mean, that seems kind of obvious. Why we wouldn't be able to stay in Valinorth in the present day? They're obviously, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're after me and they're after the blade. So... Let's go back. Okay, I think I think that's that's all of it. Right, okay, good. We're getting the checkmark. So there's a book somewhere. Um, I walk over the altar on the Grand Tree, and there's a book sitting there. Its pages spread open. Whoa, what do you know? At first glance, it looks completely unimportant. But I flip a few pages, and then I realize there's a small piece of paper hidden between a few pages. It was important enough to hide, so I quickly read the contents. Milas's note. Recently, the Rebel Alliance has reached out to me. At first, I pushed them away, thinking them little more than a rogue group of bandits. But they said they knew the truth about my father. How could they know? In my situation, it was hard to resist temptation. I had to ask them exactly what they knew. The truth shocked me, and I have yet to tell anybody. I might take it to my grave. It's not the truth I expected, but it did shake me to my core. My father was in the middle of an important task. As his son, I felt that it was my duty to help finish it. I have no hatred for the Triumvirate. This is simply a matter of familial ties. Were anybody posed with such a situation, I doubt their actions would differ from mine. It doesn't seem too difficult either. They've given me a blade and tasked me with protecting it. In the next little while, they will send an envoy to pick it up. At that point, I am to send someone special with them. I must keep their name secret so nobody finds out. This envoy, however, will be coming any day. I can't wait to meet him. I've been told that he knew my father, and he would have all manner of stories to tell. Nope, oh, sucks for you, Milas. Yes. This is it. This is what we needed. I call over Auroric and Vilesa, showing them what I found. Auroric seems tensed up and even a little anxious. So Milas was working with the Rebellion. Apparently, he was sheltering the blade. Could that be why they attacked us? Perhaps. Doing all this for a blade? Let's be realistic, Vilesa. 
It must have been very important. I'm assuming Milas took it with him. I don't see any blades lying around here. But about this envoy he mentioned, and this supposed special person. Ulrich, why did you lie to us? Ta-da! It's true, anybody would have figured it out by now. He seems to admit defeat and closes his eyes. Almost like he didn't want to see us as he spoke. We didn't think you'd come if you knew. I tried to hide it, but I guess there's no point anymore. After seeing this attack, I need to request your help. This is far from the first village they'll raise. They're up to something much bigger. That's why you wanted to come here, right? Yeah, you're right. There's little time to argue and nowhere else to go. It looks like you got what you needed, Ulrich. Let's get back to the town square. We'll exit the village through Main Street. We nod and make our way out of the Grand Tree. I smile softly, as this knowledge would be invaluable. We had probable cause for the attack and new Milas' involvement. As soon as I woke up, I'd have everything I need to help Valinorth. Alright! The flames have spread, but it's not too bad. I need to make sure I don't inhale too much smoke. As we take slow, cautious steps, my mind is conflicted. There's one thing I can't seem to get off my mind. This blade or whatever. Was it worth all this? Destroying an entire culture for something so simple? Sorry, I can't see all that well. You two will have to lead the way. I'm not as familiar with the surroundings. We crouch to make our way through Valinorth. I have a rushing urge to cough, but I try and hold it back. We wouldn't want to make it, make it this far and get caught. The water tank is cracking and leaking its contents. A small stream trickles through the village. This would be our best tool to hinder the flames. This isn't right. Not at all. Where is everyone, Ulrich? There's not a single body. Like I said, they probably fled to safety. We need to do that too and fast. There's nothing left for us here in Valinorth. But no bodies still? It doesn't Nobody make any sense. Knows the trouble. Think about it for a second. In that alcove, we heard screams. The people of Valinorth were dying. Not only burning, but getting attacked. There should be bodies all over the place. Hmm. She was right, and it bothered me as well. The current scene didn't match what we heard. Was it possible for visions to warp this way? What are you suggesting, Valessa? Do you think they stole the bodies? Perhaps. If they did, there'd be blood. There's nothing, not even a trace. Doesn't make any sense, Ulrich. We have protocols for this kind of emergency. There should have been people in the Grand Tree, even if it was those too stubborn to shun tradition. Why is it so important, Valessa? You seem to think everybody disappeared. We should go to Peregrino. There must be survivors. I doubt we'll find answers in Valinorth. We're on the right track, so let's not waste time. We can reach Peregrino in a couple of hours. It made sense, and finally our goals aligned. Searching for information and getting the safety. Survivors could be a biggest source of information. Besides, I'm sure that Milas will be there. He can tell you everything, Valessa. I'm sure he knows what's going on. That's a good enough plan of action, We need and we nod to one another. As you continue to move, everything changes. <laughs> oh, jeez. The hammy villain finally shows up. Such loyalty to the man who condemned you all. If you want to know where Mylas is, I'd love to show you. I can even reunite you with the rest of the villagers. Aw, oh, how lovely. We stop in our tracks and look up at the water tank. A silhouette of a man stands there, gripping a large blade. It's white and gold, with, ma uh, with majesty embellished by the flames. It reminds me of the suits of armor we fought earlier. I have no doubt this was some sort of relation. We must be looking at the man responsible for this. He jumps down from the water tank and lands with a roll. Hey, at least he... Rolled, and you aren't supposed to roll if you jump from a large height. I take a few steps back, ensuring that Ulrich remains in the front. If his job was our protection, now is the time to shine through. What a pitiful little village. It's no fun when they don't put up a fight. Did you know what they did in their final moments? They begged for their lives. They called out to you, Sia. Oh. They wanted your help, and you let them down. I guess the stories I heard about you were wrong. No, you're wrong, Mr. Chiplock. Silver, you already have the blade. Let us leave. We can resolve this peacefully. No survivors. Don't you remember the rule? Like a garden, we have to pluck all the weeds. So, Exterminatus. Also, why does he know the rules? Is that all these people are to you? Sovi, they have a culture, and history. 
Yes, but it's not theirs that I'm interested in. In fact, I'm only here to claim the seer soul. Everything else was just for fun, for sport. Well, now we know he's an actual bad guy. This becomes personal, and now it's personal, and they seem to know each other. They both worked for opposing forces I'm sure they fought before. It sickens me, it sickens me that he likes, likens killing the villagers to a sport. You don't mean... My orders had nothing to do with burning down this village. I wasn't supposed to kill anyone unless I had to, either. What do you know? My apprentice isn't very fun to train with. Disgusting. Unless I take this seer and run, I'll catch up with you at Peregrino. Or oh, pulls out his blade and assumes a fighting stance. Sylvie does the same, and their eyes meet in deadlock. I look at Valesa, and we nod before starting to run. Unfortunately, we don't make it very far. We hear Ulrich scream and turn back to look. Sylvie smirks at us, his blade deep in Ulrich's abdomen. Where do you think you're going, you two? It would be rude to leave before I'm done with you. Watch, and you'll see why you can never win. Oh yes, yeah, Slappy? Oh. I wasn't expecting that noise. With a grin on his face, he twists the blade inside Ulrich. Defying all possibility, the gear on the base starts to spin. Soon after, everything is engulfed in a blinding white light. Please, run. Oh, the text box flashed too. We hear Ulrich's final words as the light subsides. When everything is back to normal, he's completely gone. No blood, no body. Just so he's standing there with pride. What? What did you do? I put his spirit to good use. Like I plan to do with your little friend. Well, snap. He points behind us and we turn to look. The scattered pieces of armor on the ground start to move. They assemble, forming bodies that move in a slow, stiff fashion. But after a few moments, the movements become more natural. It isn't much longer until an army of automatons block our path. There's nowhere to go. Sylvie blocked the other side. You... you're using the spirits to power that armor. Does that mean we've been fighting our own? Now you finally understand. The force of life itself bends to the triumvirate. There's no way that you could hope to stop us. No. He takes slow steps towards me, holding out the blade. I finally understand. Understood why it was so important to the triumvirate. They could command an army of spirits simply by possessing it. As soon as I harvest the seer's soul, I'll leave. Valesa, if you behave, I might let you go. Visit the rebels. Tell them what's coming. Now, 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 so if we don't get overconfident. This is it. If he attacked me, the vision would end. I was armed with all the information I needed to counter this attack. The true purpose and major players, and even the nature of the blade. He was so certain it was a victory, he had no idea. I took a step forward, embracing what was to come. When this future came for Valon, the three would be ready. Yeah. He thrusts the blade inside of me with little effort. The pain is so intense, but I'm overcome with hope. As my vision fades, I find the strength to say one final thing. Hmm. Now, see, I'm wondering if there's someone who can potentially see the vision, too. See, if he can command the blade, then he obviously has power. And I'm thinking that only certain people are able to use this thing. Um, so... And if I'm able to use the blade... So he probably has the same powers as I do, so I'm just gonna be... A... Oh, that's it. That always catches me off guard for some reason. So... The vision ends. My eyes shoot open and I instinctively clutch my gut. The pain for the vision lingers, pulsing through my body. Panting heavily, I squirm in pain, waiting for it to fade. What the freaking- Oh, I fall off the side of my bed and slam to the floor. <laughs> Thankfully, this makes me fully elicit stopping the pain. For a moment, it's as if I existed in both scenarios. I raise to a sitting position and focus my breathing, still in shock at what happened. My heart beats frantically. It takes a while before it slows down, but I happily wait. With these negative feelings subside, I stand up, and the vision I just experienced plays a loop on my head. I had the word my list. I had to ensure it didn't happen. A knock sounds on my door, and I lock up in fright. After what I just saw, my mind is filled with anxiety. Thankfully, as a voice calls out to me, I'm put at ease. Hey, Seer! Open up! Don't make me wait all day again! Now that must be that Fortemain dude. It's Fortemain. He's my best friend, a Melissa student. As my scribe, she had the train at backup, so to speak. A terrible scenario to plan for, but it had to be done. I rush over to the door and quickly unlock it. Welcoming in him, I notice a huge grin on his face. If we relax, it's a brief reminder of safety. Did you just wake up? Oh jeez. I hope we won't be late. Don't tell me you forgot what day it is.
I, w- I want to see his reaction. Do it for the memes. It's cute guy day. Stop that. <laughs> I'm saying weird stuff again. I should be the one flattering you. It's your day. Something like this only happens once a generation. You're being officially inducted. You know, the ceremony to brand you as a seer? It should have happened ages ago, but stuff got in the way. Yeah, imagine that. You know, Let's hiding not delay it anymore, all right? blades of Just ultimate power, you know, in... Milas wants it. In the, the village and all this conspiring with rebels, yeah, you know, stuff got in the way. Yeah. Use keyboard is her name. Razzle Joe Star. Thanks. This is exactly what I'll need. Put on something fancy. I'll wait outside. All right. I reach out to try and stop him, but he's already gone. It's for the better, though. Cause he mustn't know what I saw. The only people authorized to know were Minus and Vanessa. I walk over to my wardrobe to look for an outfit. As far as being pointed out, I'm still in my small clothes. If it was a big day, I guess I have to dress apart. What should I wear? But I mean, I'm a guy, so I wear menswear, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that should be a fine choice. I slip into the menswear and turn back to my room. I take in everything at once, it's a huge mess. Once I meet Fort Domain, Matt, well, meet Fort Domain might be busy for a while. I should finish up any last minute business while I can. But at the same time, I shouldn't keep him waiting for long. Okay, so we're finally back in... Who is this? This character is not in my party. Well, that character needs to get here. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop it here. I didn't expect that to take so freaking long. But, eh, we had a good stopping point. Um, so, I have to say, I am a lot more interested in this than I am Major Minor. This kind of just gets everything going. I, I did think it was a little front loady, but I guess because Clay's is trying to do the whole RPG thing, that makes sense why I could ask characters 20 questions. But yeah, I mean, uh, it's got a higher production value, I'll give it that. And I am interested to see where the rabbit hole goes. I'm just happy that it didn't take two hours before I found out who the main, what the major threats were. Like in Major Minor, I remember that from my stream. It took like upwards of like almost like oh, two or so hours before we found out about the midnight deaths which were on the back of the not back of the box but they're on the steam store page so it's like but yeah so uh, anyways i am russell joestar i'll see you guys next time and because i can save anywhere i'm gonna go ahead and save here and uh, i will uh i'll see you guys in the next one uh, take care and beware the winds of change and uh villains voiced by sean cheplock